Good evening. Good evening. I'd like to welcome you all to the Thursday, May 23rd, 2024, regular monthly meeting of the Portsmouth City School Board. I ask you please stand now for a brief moment of silence. Thank you. You may be seated. We do have a room full of VIP guests in here this evening. I'll ask Dr. Bracey to come forward now so he may introduce them at this time. Thank you, Chairman Patillo, and good evening once again to everyone, and welcome to our meeting tonight. So I have the pleasure of uh, introducing some special guests, and they come by way of Parkview Elementary School. So that's right, give yourselves a round of applause. Yeah, yeah. So the first thing that I would like to do is um, we have two students um, that will be presenting the pledge and the school statement. So I'm going to call the student's name and will you all come down and as you come down, I'll read some information about you. I'll give you a, a brief bio. So first, Nori Hill, who will be doing the Pledge of Allegiance. And Michaela. Deason, who will be providing the school statement. Hi. So, Nora Hill is, a, is in the second grade. She has made honor roll as well as uh, earned perfect attendance this school year. <laughs> she takes part in the Horizon Summer Camp and also attends church every Sunday with her grandma. Nori dreams of being a pediatrician when she grows up. She's with her parents, Tamisha Jones and Roy Hill. And parents, if you're present, please stand. Now, some information on Michaela. She's in the sixth grade at Parkview where she's earned straight A's on her last report card. She is part of the school's Caroling Tigers Chorus, as well as the All Virginia Elementary Chorus and Virginia Children Chorus. In fact, she performed at the Sing for Joy concert at IC Norcom and was also in four performances during the Virginia International Tattoo at Scope in April. Oh, girl. Yeah. This is in addition to her playing softball in the senior division of the Wilson Little League, as well as being an active member of Trinity Episcopal Church. When she grows up, she would like to be a financial advisor or attorney. She is joined with her parents, Jennifer and Marlon Deason. And will parents, will you please stand and be recognized? <laughs> All, right. All right, so we will now begin. Good evening, Chairman Dr. Patillo, Vice Chairman, Ms. Atkinson, members of the board, Dr. Bracey and Chief Officers. I'm Dr. Wynn Nimmin, Principal at Parkview Elementary, and I'm joined with Assistant Principal, Mrs. Betts. This evening, we bring greetings from some phenomenal students and families and community partners. Um, and we also have, we'll have a special performance after we talk about some of the wonderful things we have going on at Parkview from our Tiger Orf group and the Carolyn Tigers. So Michaela will share some of the things we have going on at Parkview. Hello, I'm Michaela Deason, a sixth grader at Parkview Elementary. This year, our school has grown in technology and literacy, music and art, mentorship and citizenship, family involvement, and school safety. Through the leadership of our TRT, Ms. Satina, our technology curriculum includes the Tiger's Den morning announcements for the second year in a row. Our broadcast team members record the morning announcements each morning before school. 
The students are also responsible for all the video editing and writing the script. We hosted our first annual Share the Love of Learning Family Technology Night. We are also a national common sense education recognized school. Ms. Satina also provides the tech-centered lessons to students. Our library media center hosted our first annual spelling bee, including kindergarten through sixth grade finalists. Our illustrious music, Mr. Thornton, organized and coached several after-school music ensembles, including the Tiger Orf Players, Students in 4th through 6th grade performed in the 2023 All Virginia Elementary Orth Ensemble, the only school represented by Portsmouth Public Schools. We also have the Caroling Tigers students in 2nd through 6th grade. Performed for the annual Old Town Holiday Festival in December 2023, the Churchland House of Senior Living in December of 2023, and March 2024. They most recently performed the National Anthem for April, on April 25th, 2024 Tides Baseball Game. The Tiger Orf players and Caroling Tigers performed at Maryview Hospital in Parkview for the winter holiday celebrations. In addition to the group, students in grades 4 through 6 participated in the All Virginia Elementary Chorus in Harrisburg, Virginia in the Portsmouth Public School All City Sing for Joy Chorus last year Mr. Thornton collaborated with the students from I.C. Norcom High to present our first school musical, Susical Junior. Our art teacher, Mr. Craig, supported the following students in their Portsmouth Public Schools art show selection. Second grader Alessia Wilson won the Lynx Colorful Emotions second place award for work entitled Stained Glass Girl. First grader Naria Patho won first place for her work in crayon and watercolor titled Look at Me. Second grader Mackenzie Morgan Joel won first place for her work in crayon and watercolor titled Ode to Picasso. Our brother, our bros for goals and school and for girls with pearls mentoring program partnered with Delta Sigma Theta's Chesapeake Theta's Chesapeake Chapter Scouts of America, Norfolk State University, founder and CEO of Green Enterprise, Mrs. Marilla Green, and Portsmouth Public School Elementary Coordinator, Ms. Nicole Booker. The culminating event for these groups will be likened on June 12th aboard the Norfolk City Cruises Yacht. We also partner with 757 Stop the Violence to provide students with a safe place to learn and play after school. Our Student Council Association meets weekly to encourage citizens and plan student events. The SCA raised funds to donate $100 to CHKD students for gifts during the winter holiday. They also planned and hosted our second annual sneaker ball. We also launched our Paw Patrol program, which includes students in grades 4 through 6 grade, the reinforcement PBIS rules, and expectations throughout the hallways during afternoon dismissal. Our Title I parent liaison, Mr. Brown, hosted several school and division events this year, including Muffins with Moms, Nacho Average Title I Night, Spooktacular Reading Night, Measure Up Night, Read Away the Holiday, Love for Reading Pajama Night, March Madness Basketball, and The Color Run. <laughs> Lastly, we are looking for community partners to support the development of our school programs. If you or anyone would be interested, please have them contact Dr. Wynn Inman or Miss Betts. Thank you for your attention. Pledge of Allegiance. 
I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Dr. Winneman, uh, for, for, uh, wait one moment. Uh, some board members want to have comments to the students. We just wanted to say awesome job, Nori, Michaela, the and Dr. Wynn and Miss Miss Beth. Thank you so much for coming, and the report that you just gave for Parkview Elementary. Y'all are doing some phenomenal things. I heard the ask at the end about any f future community partners, and what you've already done is amazing. And I can't wait to hear more from this future pediatrician, future of what, financial advisor, and what else did you say? Attorney. Attorney, wow, okay. The money and the law, I love it. So just excellent job, students. You represent and really show that PPS shines. So thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Wynn, thank you so much. Thank you, and we also had a student. When we were coming in, we also had a student here on the end. She wants to know what does she have to do to work in here? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Ms. Winnem, which student was it? So just fill out an application now. We're going to hold that until you turn 18. <laughs> but, but, because we need all the teachers we can get, so we're going to do that for you. Good evening, board. Thank you for having us tonight. Um, the song that we're going to sing and perform tonight is called Viva La Musica, and it means long live music.
And can, can we give them all another big hand? And can we give another hand for our music teacher, Mr. Thornton? Uh, Vice Chair Atkinson. Thank you, Chair. I just want to um, thank board member uh, Thomas for the assist. You're only as strong as the woman standing next to you. So thank you for those comments. Also um, to uh, Parkview Elementary um, Ensemble, that was a great job. I'm a big advocate for music and the arts. Um, students participating in music or have early exposure to arts are less likely to be involved in the juvenile justice system. And studies have shown that they show they score higher on standardized testing. So um, it's good to see that in our elementary schools. Um, also, shameless plug to Parkview Elementary to our board members. They do have field day on June 7th. <laughs> so um, any board members that would like to sponsor or support, um, please reach out to the school to assist with their field day. Um, I know we have our partner schools that we're already assisting, but if y'all can lend a helping hand to the Tigers, that would be appreciated. Um, so, and, and thank you so much. And Dr. Wynn, I, I, I see you, I see you over there. Great job, continue to be a community principal. Um, love what you do for Parkview, thank you so much. Since you already have the mic, agenda <laughs> item 3.5 is our school board <laughs> mission statement, Vice Chair Atkinson. The mission of the Portsmouth Public School Division is to gauge all students in learning that will foster academic excellence and responsible citizenship. Thank you so much. Agenda item 3.6 is our attendance. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Ms. Atkinson? Here. Mrs. Boone? Here. Dr. Cotton? Present. Mrs. Futrell? Here. Mrs. Shoemake? Here. Mrs. Thomas? Here. Dr. Whitaker? Here. Dr. Patillo? Present. Eight members present, one member absent. Thank you so much. Now, I would like to thank again Ms. Patterson for filling in on tonight for her clerk duties. Ms. Stewart is not with us, and we want to keep her in our thoughts and prayers. She lost her mother over the week, so we will continue to pray for her uh, during this time. Agenda item 3.7 is consideration of the agenda for May 23rd, 2024. I entertain a motion at this time. Second. Motion made by Ms. Boone, second by Vice Chair Atkinson. Any discussion? Seeing none, roll call vote, Madam Clerk. Ms. Atkinson? Yes. Mrs. Boone? Yes. Dr. Cotton? Yes. Mrs. Futrell? Yes. Mrs. Shoemake? Yes. Mrs. Thomas? Yes. Dr. Whitaker? Yes. Dr. Patillo? Yes. It's unanimous. Thank you so much. Agenda item 4.1 and 4.2 is public comment for non agenda and board agenda items. Do we have any speakers? No registered speakers. All right, thank you so much. Agenda item 5.1, one of my favorite moments in our meeting, our student representative report, Ms. Karina Drummond. Hello, hello, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Uh, <laughs> sorry, Chairman Patillo, Vice Chairman Atkinson, Dr. Bracy, and other members of the board. Um, I heard that this is my last meeting. Oh. <laughs> I was supposed to hear more sadness. Oh, gosh. Okay. <laughs> um, what can I say other than thank you? Uh, thank you for the many opportunities you have given me over this year. It's crazy how fast this school year flew by. I started this year with many dreams and aspirations, but I stacked my plate too high, having two jobs, 200 million clubs, college, high school, and more. And by the time I had this school board rep thing kind of figured out, the year has sadly passed. But even with the obstacles, I could always find time for this board. There were many highlights this year from the student rep session in Williamsburg. Oh, that was amazing. And the hosted dinner that we had. Food was great. Loved it. Loved it. <laughs> this year has been an amazing one. I hope to never forget. And the lessons and experiences I have gained from being your school board representative will follow me from now until to forever. This may have been just a temporary position, but the members of this board uh, will always, and all that have helped me will always be my family, and the city of Portsmouth will always be my home. Thank you for the kindness and support you have provided me with as I continued into the next chapters that lay ahead. To the next rep, 
I'll have a quick tip for them. Hopefully they're watching somewhere. Do not stack your plate too high. Learn time management and only exhaust energy where you are appreciated. And this school board will show you nothing but love, support, and appreciation. We are going to be so happy to have you. With love and a full heart, I say see you later because goodbye is final, and this isn't a final. So I will see you all again. Mwah! <laughs> uh, Karina, Karina, I, I just want to say thank you again for all that you've uh, given of yourself to the school division this year and to this board. And I will say at our VSBA board of directors meetings, they still talk about you <laughs> and, and, and your personality, and you've represented the school division well. I only okay. have one request from you. And that is once you go to college and you start your career, that you return back and share those gifts and talents with other students here in the city. Of course. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right. Agenda item six is our consent agenda item 6.1 through 6.7. I entertain a motion at this time. So, motion made by Ms. Boone, second by Ms. Futrell. Is there any discussion? Saying none, roll call vote, Madam Clerk. Mr. Atkinson? Yes. Mrs. Boone? Yes. Dr. Cotton? Yes. Mrs. Futrell? Yes. Mrs. Shoemake? Yes. Mrs. Thomas? Yes. Dr. Whitaker? Yes. Dr. Patillo? Yes. It's unanimous. Thank you so much. Agenda item 7.1 is our monthly report for curriculum and instruction. Dr. DeVries. Good evening, School Board Chair Patillo, Vice Chair Atkinson, School Board members, and Dr. Bracey. You have your highlights from our um, hardworking department. Um, they have been hard at work um, supporting the SOL uh, and, and, of course, tests out in the buildings and doing an amazing job supporting. Um, so you'll see that and more in your highlights. Today I have Senior Supervisor Carrie Hatfield. She is our Senior Supervisor of World Languages and ESL. And she brings to you some specific highlights of the year from her two areas that she oversees, as well as a special guest who I will have her introduce, Ms. Hatfield. Good evening, Dr. Bracey, Chairman Dr. Patillo, Vice Chairman Atkinson, esteemed school board members, division senior leadership, and all in attendance. I'm Carrie Hatfield, the Senior Supervisor for ESL and World Languages, and I'm delighted to share with you this evening about our ESL, World Languages, and Dual Language Immersion programs, each of which is an integral piece in our students' lifelong language journeys. I'll begin with our ESL program, which has grown tremendously this year, now including over 250 students. Having recently welcomed our new ESL supervisor, Ms. Chelsea Kohler, we're working to grow our staff across the district for the 2024-2025 school year. Additionally, we have spent this year in curriculum development with a focus on thematic units, and we're anxious to deploy it in the fall. Next, it's my pleasure to share that we have started to build home language libraries in each of our elementary ESL classrooms. We continue to build these libraries in support of biliteracy and multiliteracy in Portsmouth and beyond. Lastly, in support of the seal of biliteracy, our ESL and world language high school students have been invited to take the STAMP test. This test measures language proficiency across the four modalities, listening, reading comprehension, writing, and speaking. Students who have achieved an intermediate mid proficiency level according to the scale provided by the American Council on the Teaching of Foreign Languages will qualify to receive the seal upon graduation. I'd like to provide a bit more information about the actual proficiency levels as they pertain to the Virginia Seal of Biliteracy. First, this is a national scale and it's widely used to express language proficiency. Next, in order to achieve the seal of biliteracy upon graduation, a student must not only meet the criteria for graduation, but they must also provide evidence of proficiency in a language other than English. This may be achieved through numerous, numerous pathways, including the stamp test. Virginia requires a proficiency level of intermediate mid in order to qualify for the seal, meaning that they can create with the language, ask and answer simple questions on familiar topics, and handle a simple situation or transaction. Notably, this scale provides performance descriptors which describe the levels, levels and sublevels, for use in the classroom, workplace, and beyond. Now, I would like to share some updates relative to our world language program. 
which continues to support proficiency through the study of French, Latin, and Spanish. This year, our program has included field trips to see the Flamenco Ballet, the Three Musketeers play at the Wells Theater, a trip to La Paria Restaurant, an opportunity to see the Broadway play Hades Town, and an upcoming visit to the Chrysler Museum, an Oropax restaurant, as well as a visit to the Greek Festival in Newport News. I'm also pleased to share that our high school world language students provided A-level instruction during our pre-K world language event in April. This in under the direction of our high school world language department chairs, Ms. Hazel Perry at Churchland High School, Mr. Joseph Yancey at Manor High School, and Ms. Magda Davila at Norcom High School, and their teams. This inaugural annual event was not just an opportunity for our youngest learners to broaden their language journey, but also for our older learners to share and grow their instructional skills. Lastly, I'd like to iterate that we will once again host a World Language Summer Enrichment Program at Victory Elementary. This program, under the care of Ms. Wanda Franco Alave, Spanish teacher at Manor High School, Ms. Giselle Pari, French teacher at Manor High School, and Ms. Catherine Druin, French teacher at Churchland High School, will once again permit elementary students from across the district to set a course for language learning for life. Recognizing that language study is shown to lift general academic achievement and that these courses may serve as a gateway as gateway languages that support future language learning and professional pathways, our world language program is an integral consideration in Portsmouth's profile of a graduate. Next, with an eye on interculturality, a language proficiency, and an empathy for language learning, it was an honor to offer the faculty staff Spanish class during the spring semester. This class was open to all PPS team members and was available to beginner and intermediate learners. These 10-week classes, facilitated by Ms. Franco Alave at Manor High School, merited such praise as, I could not wait to have the opportunity to refresh my skills with this class. The ability to learn a second language is something I believed everyone should have access to, and the fact that PPS offered something like this for all staff members to, sell, to participate, it was in was awesome. I'm glad that I was able to be a part of it, shared by Ms. Alora Artis, Executive Associate at the Office of Curriculum Instruction. She went on to say that Ms. Franco was an excellent teacher and she made the class engaging and fun. She really took the time to immerse us in experiences such as simulating a restaurant or even bringing in props to reinforce vocabulary. It was great to exercise our speaking skills constantly and actually apply what we learned to help reinforce it. This class was phenomenal and it would be beneficial to anyone who decides to take it. As we plan for 2024-2025, we hope to offer future learning experiences for our faculty and staff. Next, we look forward to opening our dual language program in the fall. This is sure to be an exciting new chapter for Portsmouth Public Schools. Rising kindergartners from across the district will be eligible to apply for participation. And we look forward to next year's school board presentation when we'll surely share updates relative to bilingualism and biliteracy, grade level academic achievement, and cross-cultural competence through Spanish, our partner language. It's a joy to share that Nylea Williams and Deanna Dunn, students at Norcom High School and Manor High School, oh, pardon me, Manor High School students, recently received a Cath the Catherine B. Woodward Award, sponsored by the Gamma chapter of the Delta Gamma, Gamma, Gamma sorority. This award recognizes seniors who have exhibited excellence in their world language studies. We invite you to learn more about this scholarship opportunity and the essays that Nylea and Deanna submitted in support of their applications through this video. Thank you to Mr. Gene Schlapfer for his kind assistance. Another reason why you should take a foreign language is because immersing yourself in different cultures can create more positivity in your life, which in turn will create less prejudice towards people who are different. I heard about the Catherine B. Woodward Award through my Spanish 4 teacher, Mr. Joseph Yancey, um, who came to me with the scholarship and said that I needed to write an essay on why foreign language was important and why students should take it. Um, I wrote my essay and then I got the call that I had received the scholarship. My essay was about trying to persuade people, um, more so high school students, to take a foreign language and the importance of foreign languages and why it should be required for students. Learning a foreign language can help improve your memory and problem-solving skills as well as your overall brain function. 
as you learn to analyze and interpret new words and phrases. My language study has impacted my global citizenship because I'm now knowledgeable of different cultures, different traditions, and like the root of the English language through Latin. Languages, it's just a form of communication. Um, they all kind of interact with each other. Through learning Spanish, I noticed that my English had gotten much better. My future learning goals with my language of Latin, I'm going to use it in my career for medical terms and just for background to know what I'm doing and what I'm learning and stuff. It's just a helpful resource to have. I plan to attend Delaware State University where I plan to minor in Spanish there and hopefully get um, a better understanding of the language. Overall, making the choice to learn a foreign language is nothing but beneficial. You will only advance yourself in life, in your work, your culture, your mind, and even your soul. We wish both students every success as they move to a new chapter. It was impossible to hide the instructional talent that our world language students exhibited during our pre-K world language event. Here this evening to tell us about her experience is Christina Hatcher, mm -hmm. a Spanish student at Noricum High School. Christina is joining me at the podium to share her remarks. Buenas tardes. My name is Christina Hatcher, and I am a freshman at IC Norcom High School. Having studied Spanish 1 at Waters Middle School with Ms. Adonica Keaton and Spanish 2 during the fall semester with Ms. Kelly Bowe, I felt well prepared for Spanish 3 this semester. My teacher, Ms. Magda Davila, offered me the opportunity to volunteer for the pre-K world language event. When my teacher invited me to participate, my friend and I committed to the activity. I got my permission slip signed, participated in the volunteer meeting, and I was ready. My role was to introduce the Spanish alphabet to the pre-K students using interactive activities. There were three of us working at this center, including another student from Norcom High School and a student from Manor High School. We practiced the consonants and vowels with the students. The kids loved making the vowel sounds, and it felt good to be able to help them learn about a new language. It was especially exciting that the students learned the first letter of their name in Spanish. This event allowed me to sympathize with my teachers because I now understand the importance of a strong, engaging lesson. I would encourage others to volunteer for this event because it will allow them to learn more about being a teacher and it was wonderful to interact with the pre-K students. For me, I also, I also appreciated that teachers have a lot of patience. I'm currently planning to study Spanish 4 next year and, I, and to continue my language studies at the college level. Looking ahead, I plan to pursue medicine as a career, and my language study will assist me in caring for my patients. Thank you so much to Christina and all the students who participated in this year's event. We can't wait for April 2025 when we'll once again celebrate language learning with our pre-K students. Right. As we conclude, I would like to recognize our ESL and world language teachers, a truly dedicated and caring group of professionals who work tirelessly to promote proficiency across the city. If they would please stand in recognition of their diligence and expertise. school board, I would also like to say merci, grazie, 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 for supporting global citizenship in Portsmouth, and I invite you to consider where your language journey will take you. Should you have any questions I might answer, I would be glad to. De nada. Gracias, gran trabajo. I, I think the Spanish is going to stop with me. No. <laughs> Miss Thomas. Uh, excuse me. Me llamo Yolanda. Thank you. Yes. We learned that in sixth grade. I know, I know. <laughs> but I just have to always say um, when I see the progress that our world language ESL is making, I'm blown away. I know it's not easy. Um, and so I appreciate the dedication and time 
that you continue to put into building and, and expanding because, and I don't know how to say this correctly, but sometimes uh, our society places limitations on our students, but putting um, language, um, additional language, by literacy, all of that just shows really what our students are capable of. And, you know, Dr. DeVries knows I'm always talking about this, but dual language immersion, it was something in 2020 when I ran for school board that I wanted to bring to Portsmouth Public Schools at the hearing about the language immersion programs from Virginia Beach, from Newport News, from Fairfax County and all these, you know, <laughs> cities. And thinking that our students deserve that opportunity as well. So I know it hasn't been easy. I know we have obstacles for hiring, you know, teachers that can teach that, but I just wanna say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Dr. Bracey, thank you, Dr. DeVries, and thank you for the commitment to ensuring that our students have that opportunity so that they can compete and that their world is expanded beyond their zip code, their city, so thank you. It's pretty big, thank you. Thank you for your support. Thank you so much. I had one. Oh, I'm sorry, Dr. Whitaker. For the um, language teachers that are here, can we have you introduce yourselves and tell us what you teach? Thank you. Thank you so much. May they come to the podium? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you for allowing us that grace and time. Good afternoon, good evening. I'm Alex Shabazz. I'm the middle school Spanish teacher at Churchland Middle. I've been there for five years and I'll be teaching at Churchland Primary in the dual language immersion program. You didn't say any of those things. Perdóneme. Me llamo Alex Shabazz. Soy la maestra de español in Churchland Middle School. Y en el otoño voy a enseñar los dos idiomas a nuestros estudiantes de kindergarten. Saúete hombres. Mi nombre es Jasmine Risingest, do que lingua lingua latina at Churchland High School. Um, my name is Jasmine Rising. I teach Latin at Churchland High School. Buenas. I'm not that tall. <laughs> Buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Wanda Franco. Yo soy la maestra de español. Uh, enseño español uno. Y estoy en la escuela Manor High School. Good evening, everybody. My name is Wanda Franco. I am the Spanish teacher for adults. That was me. Um, I have been teaching for Portsmouth Public Schools for 10 years. I did five years in um, IC Norcom, and now I'm in Manor High School for five years. Thank you. Hi, my name is Faith Howell. Um, I recently switched from second grade at Craddock Elementary. Um, this year, I have been the ESL teacher at um, Churchland High School, Churchland Academy, Churchland Elementary, Douglas Park Elementary, <laughs> and Simonsdale Elementary School. Hi, my name is Catherine Drowen. I teach at Churchland High School. This is my first year. Bonjour, je m'appelle Catherine. Je suis prof at Churchland High School. Bonsoir, je m'appelle Hazel Perry. Je suis professeur de français à Churchland High School. Il y a quoi? Uh, six, six ans. Six ans et uh, bonjour. Hi, good evening. My name is Hazel Perry. I am a French teacher at Churchland High School, and this is my sixth year. And hello. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Buenas tardes. Me llamo Señora Kelly. Soy profesora de español en la escuela de Churchland High School. Y este es mi quinto año. Antes, yo enseñé in Norfolk for 15 años. And hi, good evening. My name is Tracy Kelly. It is my fifth year teaching Spanish at Churchland High School before 15 years in Norfolk. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you all so much. That was exciting. 
Uh, okay, ca ca calm down, board members. We are gonna need. <laughs> Agenda item 7.2. This next presentation is a year in the making. At the beginning of this school year, Dr. Bracey launched a new employee recognition initiative, the Shining Light Awards. As you know, in Portsmouth Public Schools, we are shining brighter together, and the aim of this initiative was to identify and celebrate the shining lights who go above and beyond in their work to make our great division the wonderful place it is for children to learn and grow. This year, 32 individuals were nominated and honored in their school buildings. Tonight, we would like to formally recognize them here. When you hear your name called, please make your way to the front of the dais. Lynette Hillian, Brighton Elementary School. Barbara Johnson Gray, Brighton Elementary School. Kentrell Devon, Churchland Academy Elementary School. Dallas Van Leer, Churchland Academy Elementary School. Jennifer Columbus, Churchland Elementary School. Fred Tuwalet, Churchland Middle School. <laughs> Tiffany Myers, Churchland Middle School. <laughs> Letitia Young, Churchland Preschool Center. <laughs> Angela Phelps, Churchland Primary and Intermediate. <laughs> Patty Fleming, Churchland Primary and Intermediate. Paige Hill, Crawdock Elementary. <laughs> Kelly Williams, Crawdock Middle School. <laughs> Melva Bland, Douglas Park Elementary School. <laughs> Teresa Washington, Douglas Park Elementary School. Pamela Walton, Hodges Manor Elementary School. <laughs> Danielle Brown, Hodges Manor Elementary School. <laughs> Donna Dixon, I C Norcombe High School. <laughs> Martha Carroll, Instructional Resource Center. Mary Miles, Lakeview Elementary School. Christopher Smith, Lakeview Elementary School. Jacqueline Evans, Manor High School. Rosemary Bakhtiari, Manor High School. Tammy Moon, Olive Branch Preschool. <laughs> Laura Reed, Olive Branch Preschool. <laughs> Miyoshi Harding, Parkview Elementary School. <laughs> Annette Gatling, Simonsdale Elementary School. Susan Hoover, Simonsdale Elementary School. <laughs> Shanetta Hicks, Victory Elementary School. <laughs> Rena Mulder, Victory Elementary School. <laughs> Janae Ely, Waters Middle School. Jennifer McDougal, West Haven Elementary School. <laughs> and last but certainly not least, Ms. Abasinga Pereira, West Haven Elementary School. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please give our 2023-24 Shine Light Award winners a round of applause.
And, I, and while, while they're standing there, when our honorees were presented their awards in their buildings, they were given the vision certificate as well as a PPS writing pen and lapel pen. Tonight, we have one more surprise. Our superintendent wanted to do something special for these award winners, so he personally funded a special gift card for all of you to say thank you for your great work. We'll present those this time. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask our board members to come down and position yourself for a picture with them as well. Congratulations again to our Shining Lights. And to read their full write-ups, you can visit the Shining Light Award page on ppsk12.us. And before you leave, Dr. Bracey has one more comment to make for you all. We had a, a great time going around and um, celebrating you all. And some of you knew I was coming, some of you didn't. You know, I, I played with that when, when I came, when, when I knew you really didn't know what I was there for. But I, I have to share one story. <clears throat> when I got to the school and I saw Miss Devin, and she was coming out of the office, she didn't know what was going on. And I told her, I said, I heard about what you did, and, I'm, and that's why I'm here. <laughs> so, so she immediately went into this story <laughs> about Dr. Bracey, I was only doing what I thought I should do. And I, so I had to immediately cut her off because I didn't want to hear anything <laughs> that may end up with me later. So that taught me a lesson. <laughs> Don't ask for it because you may get it. Yeah. But uh, congratulations to all of you again. It was it's such a Thank great, you. yeah, you, you're welcome. Thank you for what you do. And uh, I, I, I did also just want to add, uh, Ms. Pereira, can you just stand up? Ms. Pereira and I started at Portsmouth Public Schools over 20 years ago as teacher assistants. And I'm just happy that she continued to work hard and she's a teacher, uh, licensed and full time with us. And I'm so thankful for what you do for our students every day. Thank you so much. Thank you all again. And guess what? As another special prize, you all can have tomorrow off. <laughs> 
I'm waiting for him to leave out. Man. <laughs> All right. Thank you all again so much. Uh, our next agenda item is 8.1, our monthly report from our superintendent, Dr. Bracey. Thank you, Chairman Patillo. I want to first reiterate my congratulations to the Shine and Light Award winners. This was our first year lunch in this recognition initiative, and it has been incredible to visit these outstanding staff members throughout the year and honor them in front of their students and colleagues. I'm proud of all of this year's honorees who have set a high bar for our division. We're looking forward to another great year of cele celebrating more shining lights next year. I have a few division reminders for families. First, please remember that all families of students returning to us next year must complete the 24 to 25 school check-in. This is a new process we put in place this year as it will help us ensure all students' information on file is correct and all necessary paperwork has been submitted. This includes everything from code of student policy to if families need bus transportation next year. Families complete the school check-in through their parent portal account. This means if you don't have one already, you need to create one. We made the decision centrally so that families must have a parent portal account moving forward. Again, this will help with collecting student data as well as keeping families up to date on student performance. Please complete the 24-25 school check-in by next Friday, May 31st. If you need more information, you can visit the parent portal webpage at ppsk12.us. This year, the Office of Title I and Special Programs is again hosting its summer resource fair for elementary and elementary school students. This year it will take place Wednesday, June 12th from 6 to 7.30 p.m. There will be resources on hand to provide students for summer break and there will be even raffle tickets for a free bicycle thanks to the sponsor Mercy Drops Dream Center. If families plan on attending, they, de they do need to RSVP by Monday, June 3rd. More information including the RSVP link was emailed to all families yesterday. Finally, we're in the midst of SOL testing. We would like to continue to wish our students luck on that test. We're proud of you. We know you will do great. I'd also like to take this time to thank our teachers, administrators, as well as staff from the Department of Curriculum and Instruction, as well as the Department of Technology, who helped prepare our, our young learners while also ensuring this testing period goes as seamlessly as possible. Thank you, Chairman. This completes my report. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, before we continue to our next agenda, I also want to uh, recognize uh, the president. He just stepped out the president of our, of our city treasurer, Mr. Paige Cherry. Uh, also, our vice mayor, Luke, Lisa Lucas Burt, and city councilman Mark Hugo for their attendance tonight. <laughs> All right, agenda item 8.2 is consideration of the final school board operating budget for fiscal year 2024-25. I uh, entertain a motion at this time. Move for approval. Second. second. Motion made by Ms. Boone. I believe the second was the Vice Chair Atkinson. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, roll call vote, Madam Clerk. Mr. Atkinson? Yes. Mrs. Boone? Yes. Dr. Cotton? Yes. Mrs. Futrell? Yes. Mrs. Shoemake? Yes. Mrs. Thomas? Yes. Dr. Whitaker? Yes. Dr. Patillo? Yes. It's unanimous. Thank you so much, and thank you, board, for your hard work, and Dr. Bracey and staff for uh, putting together our final operating budget and passing that, which includes a 7% raise uh, for all staff and most of our superintendent's priorities. So 
are there any other board member comments or concerns at this time? Vice Chair Atkinson. Thank you, Chair. I'm going to make this quick. I would like to um, invite um, anyone who's watching who's here to the fifth annual um, Stop the Violence uh, bike ride on June 1st happening in Portsmouth, Virginia. Uh, for information, stopthevalence757.com. As we know, June is National Gun Violence Awareness Month, so Stop the Violence has been visible um, and resilient in uh, keeping um, that advocacy alive in, in the 757 and beyond. Um, also, board members, you should have a flyer here. This is the um, second part of the, uh, the grant-funded program in which um, we're gonna start the uh, training for businesses, and that's gonna be happening Saturday, uh, June 22nd. Um, for anyone who's a business owner, whether you have a business or a nonprofit, um, this is your opportunity to, um, to get that information that you've been requesting training um, in regarding to your business. So for information, uh, please contact Gwen Davis, um, our MWBE coordinator. Thank you. Ms. Thomas. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, first, awesome job. Uh, thank you to our superintendent, Mr. Falk, uh, for the budget um, that passed. Thank you so much, Mr. Falk, for representing us at the city council meeting to make sure everything was as needed. Um, I also want to add to uh, what Ms. Atkinson, Chair, Vice Chair Atkinson mentioned earlier regarding the field day at Parkview. There are a few other schools have field days that same day or in general. So if any of the public, they're always looking for donations, for hot dogs, for um, just any waters. So if any of the public wants to donate to one of the elementary schools, maybe contact that school and find out what they need. They welcome donations. Um, and then I also wanted to add, I know I'm about to forget. I had three things. Ah, it was the school, let me see. All right, come back to me, Chair. I forgot the third. <laughs> yeah, I forgot the third. And, and, and it'll come back. <laughs> oh, I know what it was. I'm sorry. Thank you. It was the summer program. Um, and Lauren, I don't know. Dr. Lauren, I'm sorry. Um, I don't know. I haven't checked our website yet, but I have had a few um, questions about opportunities available for our students for the summer. And I know we have like Starbase, we have Horizons. Well, we don't have it, but we have our World Language Camp. Is there, do we have a place on our uh, website that is like a summer resource for our students? Uh, there's not a dedicated summer resource, but we do have where you select the school that best fits your time. Okay, and I'm wondering if this is not possible, but I wanna throw this out there, but the Parks and Rec, they have their camp, but in the city has some other opportunities. Is it possible that we can set up a resource page only because, I? As a parent, you have to go to the city's website or you have to go to the school's website or you have to go like anything that's city approved, school approved, and I don't know what other parameters that we can offer as a resource center for our students and their families. Okay, is that possible? Okay, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Cotton and then Ms. Petrill. Yeah, I wanted to thank Dr. Bracey as well as the staff. You do a wonderful job, even sometimes it's questioned. I have an inside view and I'm just thankful for all that you do. And I'm thankful also to work with the board members uh, that I work with, but I wanna thank you all for putting up with me, but most importantly, uh, the staff for what you do. It's, it's commendable, no matter what anybody says, okay? That's it, thank you. Ms. Futrell. Yes, thank you, Chair. So I just wanted to say, because I am the mental health advocate up here and I just want to along with everyone else um, but it's definitely holds a special place in my heart so before we conclude this month um, which is mental health awareness month I just want to leave us with a great quote from an amazing poet the Lauren Hill which says how you gonna win when you ain't right within so make sure you know we do our due diligence to take care of the inside of us so that we can be uh, amazing advocates and citizens in our city thank you Thank you all so much. Uh, please, again, enjoy your holiday weekend. Please take place and uh, take part of the city's Emoja Festival events this weekend happening for Memorial Day. And I hope you all take care of yourself and your families and each other. Meeting adjourned. Mm -hmm.